This video is brought to you by my Patreon producers. If you'd like to become a Patreon producer, you can find more at patreon.com forward slash Mason Meninga. If you're like me, you probably grew up believing that if anyone who doesn't accept Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior would go to America. I mean hell. Some of you may have even gone to hell houses where you would witness sinful acts like gay marriage, drugs, and sex, and depictions of people being tortured in hell to essentially scare you into believing in Jesus. Yes, these were real things that evangelicals would do in replace of Halloween haunted houses. The only difference between these hell houses and Halloween haunted houses is hell houses were popular because of an actual ghoul, Jerry Falwell. Regardless of how adamant many Christians are that hell exists, if you really begin to think through the argument for hell's existence, it makes as much sense as when your dentist talks to you even though you can't respond. I'm Mason Menega, and today I'll be talking about the logical reason why I don't believe in hell. Before we jump in, be sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. And also let me know what you think about the video in the comments. I first want to mention that in this video, I won't be talking about what I actually believe about the afterlife. If you can't tell, I'm still very much alive, so I can't speak about the afterlife with much authority. But maybe I'll talk about it in a video some other time. To begin, it's important to understand the argument that many Christians make for the existence of hell. They believe that an all-powerful and all-good God has and will send or allow people to go to hell. We've all heard this argument, and you may have even very well believed it at some point in your life. Different Christians might believe there are different reasons why God would send or allow people to go to hell, but regardless, the point is that God will send or allow people to go to hell. Let's make the good people at Merriam-Webster happy and start defining some terms. So what do Christians mean by all-powerful when they say that God is all-powerful? It means that God has the quality of having ultimate power, meaning that God can do anything God chooses and is in line with God's nature. So God being all-powerful means that God could put an end to the God's Not Dead franchise. God being all-powerful means that God could make a DC talk reunion happen. And God being all-powerful means that if God wanted Donald Trump to be elected president in the 2020 presidential election, regardless of how American voters voted, God could have. But I hate to break it to you evangelicals, God didn't. All right, that's all powerful. So what do Christians mean by all good when they say God is all good? It means that God has the quality of having ultimate goodness, meaning that it is God's nature to only do good things. For example, we know that genocide is not good, so God would not will genocide to happen. We also know that Mondays are not good, so God would not will for Mondays to happen. We also know that Nickelback is not good, so God would not will for Nickelback to happen. That's all good. But what do Christians mean by hell? There are different understandings of hell throughout Christian history, but most Christians would argue that hell is eternal conscious torment. So that means hell is the state of being tormented forever and also being conscious of that torment. So basically, hell is like when you're watching a movie with your parents and an unexpected sex scene happens. So with those definitions of all powerful, all good, and hell, let's talk about why the argument that an all powerful and all good God would send or allow people to hell doesn't make any sense. So if God is all powerful, God could make sure no one went to hell. And if God is all good, then God wouldn't want people to go to hell. I think even the most conservative Christian would argue that God would ideally not want people to go to hell if possible. So if God could actually prevent people from going to hell and God doesn't want people to go to hell, then people wouldn't go to hell. Okay, so you Calvinists watching this video are probably ready to hit me over the head with your IPA beer bottle. And you Arminians are probably like, but Mason, you're forgetting about free will. And for those who did not grow up Christian, yes, there is a thing called free will. They aren't mispronouncing free willy. So the argument of free will is basically that humans have a will and God must respect that will, even if God would will something else. So this argument means that because humans have free will, they are the ones willing themselves to hell. The problem with that argument is that if God is all powerful and all good, God will do the good thing for humans. In this case, that would be to prevent them from going to hell. 
If God knew a person was willing themselves to something as eternal and evil as hell, there's no logical way that an all-powerful and all-good God would allow such a thing to happen. To say that God will respect human free will, even if that leads one to hell, is like saying God is like a parent who allows their child who is running into the street to get run over by a car because that's the child's will. If a parent could prevent a child from getting killed by a car, and a parent would hopefully want to prevent a child from getting killed by a car, then a parent would prevent the child from getting killed by a car. I would hope that we would all think that a parent who would respect the free will of a child in that situation is a shitty parent. So if we would think that that parent is a shitty parent, then why wouldn't we also think that God is a shitty God if God would allow humans to will themselves to hell, even if God could and wanted to prevent it from happening? All right, so I have a confession. I think there is one reformed theologian who is right about all of this. Yes, I think someone who is reformed is right. And it's Karl Barth. It feels so good to get that off my chest. So his argument is basically that if God is all powerful and all good, then that would mean everyone would be safe. Because if God could save everyone and God wanted to save everyone, then everyone would be saved. So if you're a Christian who believes that God is all powerful and all good, the only logical conclusion to that is that everybody would be saved. God damn Karl Barth for making me agree with a reformed theologian. Ugh. There you have it, the logical reason why I don't believe in hell. It simply doesn't make any logical sense that an all-powerful and all-good God would send or allow people to go to hell. And I don't think free will is a good counter-argument. So even though Jerry Falwell will allow you to go to a hell house for Halloween, God won't allow you to go to hell forever. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And also tell me what you thought about it in the comments. If you'd like to support more of my work, check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Mason Menega. Also check out my podcast, A People's Theology, wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks for watching. And don't forget, to be in your body is to be in God.